So um, thank you all uh, for joining uh, this session. It's great to be able to participate in, in Life Summit 2020. Uh, I am uh, Vas uh, Sada, uh, and I'm going to join by my colleague, Michael Ipp, and we're sort of split our presentation to two parts and talking about AI applications and ophthalmology. Uh, and I'm going to start off, uh, and I'm really going to focus, because we have very limited time, on, on diabetic retinopathy telescreening, because that's one of the big applications of, of AI and ophthalmology right now. Uh, and just to sort of frame the problem, uh, to give some context to why this is a priority area, is uh, we have to recognize that diabetes is a global epidemic. It's, uh, the prevalence is rising at incredible rates, uh, not only in the, all over the world, but in the US in particular, and actually in Southern California, we're really ground zero uh, for diabetes. Uh, and uh, diabetes is a huge problem because it actually affects blood vessels all over the body, uh, including in the eye. Uh, and actually, the reason why we focus so much in the eye is because the eye is optically clear. It allows us to actually see blood vessels. It's really the only part of the body which, where we can see the capillaries themselves, and we can see how the diabetes is damaging uh, the uh, the, the, the capillary system and damaging the vision. And it gives you some insight into how the vessels are being affected uh, throughout the body. So sometimes you talk about the eye as a window to the soul, and it's, it's kind of the case when you think about it in this context. Uh, now, uh, damage from diabetic retinopathy um, uh, can be uh, discovered from an eye exam. That's what your eye doctor, when you go in to see them, uh, you uh, can uh, they, they examine you with these various systems and they can see the retina, in fact. You can also actually uh, look at the manifestations of diabetic retinopathy by photographing the retina uh, using specialized cameras. Again, the retina, I should just remind those of you who are not so familiar with the eye, it's sort of, if you think of your eye like a camera, the retina is like the film of the camera. It's in the back wall of the eye. And it's what contains all of these blood vessels. And you don't have to be an ophthalmologist to see that this retina has all these red spots, which are areas of bleeding due to the blood vessel damage. In addition, uh, if diabetic retinopathy is left unchecked, you can have a lot of bleeding filling up the middle cavity of the eye and scar tissue as well. And you can imagine how these kinds of findings aren't really good when we think about uh, a patient's vision. They can lead to blindness. Uh, and, and because this is a condition that affects working age individuals, it can have a devastating impact on our society uh, and our country. Uh, and so that's why it's such a big public health problem. At the same time, though, uh, it's important to recognize that this kind of blindness is more than 90 percent preventable. Uh, and in fact, prevention is, the, is really the key here. And a prevention of people from progressing to blindness uh, is, is only possible through early detection and then treatment. And that's why the American Academy of Ophthalmology recommends an annual eye exam for all diabetic uh, patients. Unfortunately, that's just not happening. And there are a whole host of barriers to screening. I mentioned that this is primarily affecting working age individuals. These are busy people. Uh, and maybe, uh, you know, they don't notice that they have a problem. Uh, and so they might say, well, maybe I'll put that uh, eye appointment off. And so we know there are census tracts in LA where the less than 2% of the diabetics are getting screened, which is really a tragedy. Uh, another problem is that in certain regions, there may be too many diabetics and not enough eye care uh, specialists. And that also poses a big barrier to access. So to increase access to screening, uh, telescreening has been proposed. The concept here is that, you know, you have a camera system sitting maybe in the internist's office, patient comes in to get their insulin or other medications. You capture the pictures of the patient's uh, retina, you transmit it to a central reading center. Mike Yip is going to talk a lot about reading centers in particular, but these reading centers actually contain the experts who are then able to analyze the images and then provide a, re a report back with regards to uh, what is uh, ha happening in the patient's, uh, patient's eye, and then hopefully then, the, the, then an eye appointment can get scheduled. The problem though is that this kind of an approach, there are certain delays, and, and I wanna emphasize that a bit further. Now, there are actually other challenges as well. I mean, these cameras can be expensive. Uh, you, know, you still have to wait for the result, uh, and the, these pre pre present additional barriers. Some strategies is you try to bring the care to the community. I mean, for example, at UCLA, we have this mobile eye clinic van that can go in and brings the equipment to the patients, but this is still a pretty expensive solution. It is something that's used in other countries as well. This is Dr. Natarajan, who's the leading retina specialist in Mumbai, uh, and uh, they have such a van and the like. But in India, actually, they have different problems. It's hard to even get tr vans into remote villages with bad roads. So they even mounted a camera on the back of a motorbike to try to bring the care to the community. And now you can even use special attachments to your smartphone to take pictures of your retina, uh, which is pretty amazing. But the problem is that there's still another cost delay and potential barrier, and you, you still have to have the expert reading of the images by a reading center. That's what Dr. Ip's going to talk about. Uh, but now uh, we do have a solution and that we've been able to use AI to actually approach this problem of automated diagnosis uh, of, of 
the of the uh, level of retinopathy in the eye. IVX DR was a company that released the first um, uh, sort of a solution, actually one of the first FDA clearances of an AI solution for healthcare. In fact, uh, most of our work relates to the second company, iNook, and I especially wanted to talk about them, not just because we've had a number of research grants with them, but they're also here in Southern California and Woodland Hills. We've had a seven year collaboration. We've been using the experts. Dr. Ip is gonna talk about how we have these experts at the Reading Center. They provide the training to teach these AI algorithms how to recognize uh, diabetic retinopathy in the eye. Uh, and we've published on that in a number of different papers. The fundamental concept is you still obtain the images remotely through any of the devices that I mentioned. Then they're uploaded into the cloud uh, where this uh, analysis engine operates and then decides does the patient need to go in right away to see their ophthalmologist or they could go blind or could they wait? And so it's really sort of this point of care uh, type of approach. And again, uh, this is based on an ensemble of neural networks that have, that have proven to be very uh, effective. This is just an example of a, an image of a patient's retina. You can see all of the different diabetic retina the lesions, the areas of bleeding and the like being detected. Uh, and in an early study looking at multiple different camera systems, we saw pretty good performance and sort of sensitivity and specificity. Uh, and again, this can be applied, I was mentioning, uh, this is more investigational still, but to cell phone uh, acquired images as well. Uh, but uh, this also uh, went through a pivotal trial for the FDA, and this is sort of the performance criteria um, or the performance that was achieved in terms of sensitivity and specificity, and that led to FDA clearance recently. So that was kind of big news uh, because this potentially has an uh, opportunity to be really transformative in our approach uh, to these uh, patients. Uh, I just should mention that there are a lot of players in this in this space because it's a big area, a uh, big opportunity. Uh, and so Google, um, they're uh, readying their uh, pivotal study uh, for their uh, AI approach to, again, detecting diabetic retinopathy to facilitate screening uh, in this way. But I want to emphasize it's really the tip of the iceberg. There's a whole, whole host of different applications in ophthalmology. I just don't have time to discuss them in the brief time that we have. But I really hope that we get to work with uh, many of you here in the area on, on furthering these developments of AI in ophthalmology. So it's really just the beginning. I think we're scraping the surface and uh, I thank you for your attention, but I'm gonna turn things over to, to Dr. Ip for, for his uh, presentation. In fact, I think I'm going to load his right now. One second here. Apologize for this very short delay here, but just about have it. We just had some technical difficulties and that's why we had to do it this way. But let me just share this for you, Mike. And I can advance for you too, if you'd like. Yeah, you're gonna have to do that. Advance, yes, please, thank you. Um, excellent. Um, Todd, again, thank you for your leadership of this uh, very interesting and groundbreaking uh, virtual uh, symposium. It's a pleasure to to participate in this. Uh, you have asked me to speak on what is an ophthalmology reading center and how can artificial intelligence uh, assist? Uh, next. And uh, the purpose of an ophthalmology reading center, and Voss uh, alluded to this uh, in, in his very nice uh, talk, uh, which is to serve as a research resource that measures changes in images uh, in, in eye images to evaluate novel treatments for eye disease. If you click so, for example, if you have a if you had a, a drug company and they wanted to test a drug, um, you would have to uh, analyze the images uh, uh, of, of uh, the eye. So, for example, here we're, we have a, an eye image of a patient who has wet age related macular degeneration. Uh, next uh, slide. And uh, this type of study is going to require evaluation of a variety of images of the eye. So on the left, we have something called the fluorescein angiogram, which measures blood flow in the eye. In the middle, you see a, a, an actual picture, like a fundus picture uh, of the back of the eye. And on the right is something called an OCT, which measures how thick the retina is. Next. And so here's an example of an eye uh, that changes uh, with response, uh, in response to a treatment. On the left is a picture of an eye that has a lot of diabetes. Uh, the eye was subjected to a treatment. And on the right, uh, you can see that there's a lot of change in, in the features uh, of the eye. And what a reading center does is we measure, we, quant we quantify the amount of change uh, in this particular image in response to a treatment. Next. 
and you can see the next um, and you can see the same thing here on this OCT. Again, it changed in response to a treatment and at a reading center, we can quantify that change. Next. Um, and so standardization of these changes are very important with respect to staff, equipment, the protocols that were used to, Im to take the actual uh, images uh, and the ocular disease evaluators or people who actually do the measurements uh, need to follow very specific and standardized training protocols. Next. At the end of the day, what we get is an assessment of the changes in the structure of the eye to help determine if the treatment that the drug company or the sponsor is looking at is actually effective or not. Next. And so at the Doheny Image Reading Center, Voss had mentioned this, it was founded by Dr. Sada in 2003, he's the medical director emeritus, and I've been serving as the medical director since 2016. Next. And we've done a variety of clinical trials from a variety of sponsors looking at a variety of diseases, everything from common macular degeneration and diabetes to some very rare inherited retinal diseases. Next. And uh, the uh, workflow of a reading center is shown here. The eye clinics around the world or around the country take the images, they send them into us, where we assess the quality of the image before we intake them. Uh, and then uh, we evaluate the images, we grade them, and then finally their, ex their data are QC'd and then exported uh, next. And so artif artificial intelligence can help us uh, in a, a variety of these uh, uh, points uh, in the workflow of a reading center. So first, uh, next, image quality review, kind of just highlights that. And uh, uh, yeah, next. This was designed for rapid presentation here. Uh, yeah, if you can hit it next. Yeah, so there's, for example, here's a, a, a paper, there's many papers on this, but it shows how um, uh, the, a, a deep learning algorithm next is as good as uh, it, the people are looking at it, whether or not the images should be rejected or, or accepted uh, next. And here's an example of this type of an algorithm being used in one of the studies that Dr. Sada alluded to where images with poor quality were flagged and then deemed ungradable and not sent into a reading center. Uh, and next, uh, an area where AI can help us is to assess screening for the actual disease. Does the image actually contain the disease of interest or not? So here in this picture, you can see how on the picture on the right, there's a lot of disease, nothing on the left. And so we would screen out those pictures that don't have a lot of disease. Next. And this has been shown in a very uh, nice, elegant study by Defile and others, uh, Nature Medicine in 2018, that this is certainly possible. They, uh, they looked at uh, Google DeepMind and, were, and showed that a deep learning algorithm uh, could be as good as uh, imaging experts, certainly uh, as good as retinal specialists and even better than optometric evaluation. Next. And then the last several slides are to show that detailed lesion identification can be done uh, with deep learning as well. And Dr. Sada already alluded to that. So if you skip through the next couple of slides, uh, the deep learning algorithms can uh, uh, pinpoint the particular lesions of interest and help, help quantify as well as qualify them. So to conclude, uh, AI integration into reading centers, we still are facing some problems, but I think we're eventually gonna get there. There are many advantages to incorporating AI into reading centers. Uh, they will certainly help with the human associated issues of expense, turnover, fatigue at looking at these images over and over again uh, by humans. Uh, and certainly I think this will lead to cost reduction, increase of speed, and as well, I think uh, can take some of the subjectivity out of this and help with our uh, reproducibility uh, metrics. So as Voss said, hopefully uh, by giving this overview, uh, some of you who are in attendance here uh, may wish to um, collaborate with us on uh, anything that you may deem of interest that may need an ophthalmic uh, image reading center. So thank you for your attention.